So our next speaker before the uh, lunch break is uh, Ming Li, who's a scientist at Memorial Sloan Kettering. Um, Ming trained as an immunologist and is an immunologist. He did a postdoc with Richard Lavelle at Yale. Seems to be a theme in our conference today. But he's been studying, again, basic uh, mechanisms of T cell uh, function, including uh, tolerance. So thank you for participating. David, can you help me? All right, and, and thanks also to the organizers for the opportunity to share our work. And uh, it's a very general title, but I will touch upon both of these topics, which is immunity intolerance in cancer. Um, so as David introduced, my lab uh, is interested in understanding fundamental mechanisms of immunity intolerance control, particularly for T cell regulation in this context. And for many years, we have been interested in understanding how immunity against pathogens is induced at the same time tolerance to host cell tissues is, is enforced. And uh, when I started my lab uh, at a Memorial about uh, now 11 years ago, we, we sort of become interested in this question, how does the immune system perceive cancer? Cancer, as we know, is uh, quite a distinct state for the immune system to respond. On one hand, tumor cells like infectious uh, pathogens, they can uh, have essentially self uh, oriented to behavior, uh, therefore, for instance, form, forming metastasis, invading various tissues, just like pathogens will typically do. Therefore, that kind of makes sense if the immune system may evolve mechanisms for defense against tumor, therefore, possibly cancer immune surveillance. On the other hand, cancer comes from your healthy self tissue, uh, therefore, uh, part of the tolerance regulation for healthy self tissue could also take in place. At R, I just uh, introduced. Uh, cancer is also, also a genetic disease. So over time, accumulation mutations can make cancer to be more and more foreign uh, in terms of uh, the presence of distinct antigens for the immune system to react. We know, indeed, that's a fact. The immune system will not ignore the cancer. Uh, they can respond, in particular, uh, to tumor associated new antigens in terms of T cell response. But that will typically result in a dysfunctional state, not termed exhaustion. So that is defined typically by high expression of some of these inhibitory molecules, such as PD-1 CTL4. And because of the breakthrough work from James and uh, Tashuka and, and others have really uh, 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 introduced the concept that this type of somewhat dysfunctional uh, response of T cells can be re revived for, for patient benefit. So when Jim recruited me to Sloan Kettering about 11 years ago, uh, we still took this more as basic science question. So we wanted to understand how fundamental at cellular and molecular level the immune system will perceive and respond to cancer. Uh, initially, uh, understanding this immune tolerance uh, regulation, for instance, how T cell exhaustion is regulated. Uh, indeed, uh, we could show that there's a uh, really network of cellular and molecular players in this context. For instance, is a regular T cell that infiltrate tumors can promote this exhausted dysfunctional state. Uh, we showed, in part, this regulated by this FOXO family of transcription factor in terms of transcription approval involving T Rex cell regulation. We know uh, tumors growth also typically associated with expansion of this more immune modulatory myeloid cell populations, in this case, tumor associated macrophages. Uh, in, in one of the breast tumor models we use in the lab, we know in part the differentiation macrophage controlled by notch signaling that also can be involved in promoting its T cell exhaustion state. We also have data in the lab to, to show, in fact, some of this exhaustion state can be directly regulated by this inhibitory cytokine, which is TGL beta, which could also offer potential new opportunities for translational uh, 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 research. But with that being said, uh, that really poses the question, which where does the cancer meter surveillance uh, concept uh, will uh, be applied, in, uh, uh, at least for some of these models we study? We know that is the concept uh, is, is uh, very much uh, old concept uh, proposed in the early 19, uh, uh, early tw 20th century by Paul Ehrlich to describe an uh, active role of immune system in, in, in eliminating transformed cells. This was formally uh, proposed by Frank Burnett in his cancer immune surveillance uh, hypothesis. Now I think uh, with work from uh, Bob Schreib and others, uh, which really put this cancer immune surveillance concept in a more broad dynamic interaction between the immune system and the tumor cell. So in this context, some of the early stages of certain uh, immune-mediated uh, mechanisms 
can be involved in uh, eliminating the transformed cells, which can further evolve to the state that immune system not become effective in limiting uh, progression of cancer. Now, uh, work from Bob and others have shown, in fact, this conventional lineage of uh, T cell response, particularly in response to the new antigen associated with uh, a tumor, uh, loss of uh, genomic stability of the tumor cell, can be involved in some of these early stages of cancer surveillance. But yet, in some of these transgenic, oncogenic models uh, of cancer we use in the lab, we do not find that kind of evidence of more of a conventional new antigen-dependent cancer immunosurveillance. Then that really raises the question, would, for this cancer immunosurveillance concept, be that only apply to certain type of tumor types, or could still be somewhat a, 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 a norm in terms of maybe still un, uh, appreciate, underappreciated mechanism cancer surveillance? So, so this, in, in this context, that's a story I'm going to share with you today, which is uh, you essentially use this uh, transgenic model of breast cancer in the lab, uh, driven by the polymer middle T oncogene, which would activate the various oncogenic pathways like uh, um, PR3 uh, RASMAP kinase, like Dana uh, introduced, and PR3 AKT, like uh, Lou just uh, introduced. And that recapitulates, uh, to a good extent, the human breast cancer features, like it's more modeled as the luminal type of breast cancer, and it can also progress to lung metastasis and have expression of uh, various biomarkers who should be poor prognosis. Now, uh, back to this question of cancer immunosurveillance. surveillance, the very first question we asked is around this well-established cancer immunosurveillance surveillance pathway, which is a lytic granule dependent cytolytic response against cancer cells. So in this case, various types of cytolytic lymphocytes, they can, through this perforin, which is a pore-forming protein, uh, to deliver the cytolytic uh, enzymes, proteases, like in this case, grind arms to the target cell, that would result in the induction of cell pertosis. So this sort of shows a stepwise fashion how little granule can be delivered through cytolytic lymphocytes to target cell, for instance, tumor cells, to this perforin uh, 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 perform molecule, which forms pores on the plasma membrane of the target cell, then eventually the grind arms can be delivered to target cell to induce cell pertosis. So the, the, the simple question we asked initially was that, do, are these signs of potential surveillance in terms of this, this particular response? What we looked for would be basically lymphocytes can express high levels of granulines because that's a cargo need to be delivered to targets or to kill. So indeed, this is, again, this is a published story. We could show that in the transformed mammary gland compared to healthy mammary tissue, there's increased numbers of these granulines be producing lymphocytes. And that, in fact, comes from different lineages. Some of the lymphocytes express the alpha-beta receptor, others express the gamma-delta receptor, therefore would be either alpha-beta or gamma-delta lineage of T cells. Still, there are others which do not express either alpha-beta or gamma-delta receptor would be, therefore, be innate lymphocytes. So therefore, we have these lymphocytes from at least three different lineages that express high levels of grand B molecule. Now, we, uh, surprisingly, all these uh, subsets of lymphocytes, even the ones from the uh, T cell lineage, they express this more of an innate lymphocyte mark NK1.1. And they also express high levels of integrating molecule CD49A. Therefore, in fact, that really marks this high ground on B state in all lineages, uh, innate alpha, beta, gamma, delta lineage. We did a transcriptome uh, uh, analysis, which, in fact, led to a surprising uh, observation, which essentially the transcriptome uh, of these cells appear quite to be distinct from these more conventional types of lymphocytes. For instance, it will be distinct from the conventional NK cells uh, or these other more exhausted type of conventional T cells, like a PD-1 positive, CDA positive T cells in the tumor for both the alpha, beta, and gamma delta lineage. Because of that, we call, uh, name this innate lymphocytes with group one like innate lymphoid cells, or in short, IC1. L because of, uh, some, for some other detail, the explanation I will not get, have time to get into. And the T cells will be more group one innate like this because they really express uh, this, this some innate markers such as NK1.1. So what's, what's also uh, uh, striking was that uh, the transcriptome of these cells, although they come from different lymphocyte lineage, they are very much alike uh, 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 each other. Uh, for instance, they express high levels of these grand arms, not only grand arm B, but also grand arm C. 
they also express some of these integrating molecules, integrating alpha 1, that's the 49A I just showed you, but also the different integrating called integrating alpha E, which is also named CD103. Um, they also have uh, a down regular signature, which include uh, this S1P receptor, which is a, 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 a critical receptor for S1P molecule, which will promote lymphocyte traffic into lymphatics. Um, so it's, it's interesting that in this case, they're very much downregulating these groups of cells. They also have a reduced expression of the transcription effect for KF2, which is also known to control lymphocyte trafficking to the lymphatics uh, and to the circulation. That really uh, made us wonder what's the distinct tissue localization or traffic status of these cells. So in this case, we performed a parabiosis experiments, essentially connect the circulation of two mice, which can be used to address the question whether these cells tissue resident or in fact they can be recruited from the circulating progenitor. So these experiments really revealed uh, this remarkable feature which essentially these cells are, are tissue resident lymphocytes. Compared to the corresponding controlling cell population which you can have recruitment from the part in the mouse, these cells are virtually all host derived, essentially, or in other words, they mostly uh, have this uh, tissue resident uh, local um, uh, uh, renew uh, uh, mechanism start recruited from the circulation. Um, what's also interesting was that uh, uh, because of, uh, we identified this about the high expression granulimes, indeed these cells can have satellitic activity against tumor cells. In this case, we have a, a single cell killing uh, type of uh, assay in which you can see the lymphocytes and also a breast tumor cell and do a you know, real-time imaging contacts uh, to, to, to score for a satellitic uh, response. And indeed, they can kill as efficiently as the NK cells uh, this is in contrast to other more uh, conventional linear lymphocytes, uh, particular T cells, such as the exhausted uh, uh, CDA positive T cell, or this gamma data, non NK1.1 positive gamma data subset. So uh, uh, it's also killed in a perfect dependent manner because if you cross this smart to perfect diffusion background, the cell cellular response to takes place, but if you isolate these cells from these mice, they no longer kill. What's also in exciting was that in this case, perfect deficiencies without the accelerated tumor phenotype, implying that these cells have this natural cancer immunosurveillance function. Another question is that is that just a mouse phenomenon? Or could these cells be relevant in patients? We have started looking into this question. And uh, 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 so we focused on renal cell carcinoma um, tumor, just because a lot of, we can add a, 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 a memorial stone catheter, we can have patient samples in which that the primary treatment is still the surgery. Therefore, we have the patients which is sort of a naive, treatment naive patient. So therefore, uh, 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 we, we can really try to define the natural response that takes place in human. What's also exciting about this platform because the surgery can take place in which that uh, the removal of the kidney tissue can be broad. Therefore, from the same patient, we can have regions which are apparently healthy kidney tissue from the same patient as the control for the tumor. Therefore, we can dissect the really tumor-specific events in terms of immune response. So in this case, this is like a, a case of this patient in which that we could see, in fact, this innate lymphocytes defined by CD56 uh, expression that there's increased uh, um, expression of the granulum A, which uh, is a, a different granulum uh, from granulum B that we used in mice. Which also exciting was that this high granulum A uh, population appears to express high level CD56. In fact, that is fall into this population which you have expression have both 49 and CD103. These two integral molecules with identifying mice to mark the tissue resident lymphocyte population. So in fact, indeed, this 49 uh, one with double positive population appears to be this 56 high and high levels of granulum A, compared to this double negative population, which is uh, uh, similar to this conventional NK cell subset uh, 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 in human. Now, with this platform, we could also dissect different kind of uh, uh, renal cell carcinoma patients. The, the dominant carcinoma is more clear cell RCC, but it's also some with 5% RCC have this distinct uh, 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 pathological uh, phenotype called chromophobe RCC. What's exciting was that there appears to be some kind of dis distinct difference in terms of this innate lymphocyte response. So in general, for this chromophobe RCC, we have much more robust this uh, um, 
uh, innate lymphocyte response, the tissue red innate lymphocyte response, either the ones just expressed CD56 or expressed CD56 and intermediate levels of CD16. This is uh, in contrast to clear cell, which in fact we mostly see this uh, 56 high um, CD16 negative uh, response, not so much for this double positive response. So we, so we, we already have, I intriguingly, that different RCC tumor type because have distinct uh, type of uh, immune response in terms of this innate uh, uh, tissue running innate uh, lymphocyte response. Also in this context, it is intriguing to note that the, the chromophobe RCC is much more indolent than the clear cell RCC. I'm not claiming uh, totally that this innate response is solely responsible for this tumor um, uh, uh, phenotype in terms of aggressiveness of the disease. Uh, but certainly, I think that could potentially contribute to this less aggressive feature of this uh, chromophobe RCC. So we, we are still have more work to do to really figure out the potential function of this possibly human equivalent of the mouse innate uh, tissue and innate lymphocytes. But uh, then back to the mouse model, uh, the obvious question at this point for us is to really understand the, the, the identity of these cells. They have to understand the lineage and uh, differentiation of these cells which I don't think I have time to speak to you about for that question. But equally important is for us to understand how exactly that response is regulated in a tumor context. What kind of sensing mechanism that can potentially promote tissue-induced response? So in this context, we become interested in the cytokine interleukin-15. The interleukin-15 uh, is, is very much similar to interleukin-2, which probably more of you are familiar with, which is essentially T-cell growth factor. But unlike interleukin-2, which is produced just by T cells, interleukin-15 is much more broadly expressed, including not only hematopoietic sources of interleukin-15, but as well as, um, for instance, uh, 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 epithelium or uh, mesenchyma sources of interleukin-15. It's also intriguing uh, is that interleukin-15 has to be transpresented through this interleukin-15 receptor alpha to a target cell, therefore make it more of um, you would consider more of a cell surface ligand instead of a soluble cytokine in this context. Therefore, possibly give you more of a local, distinct paraquine type of regulation instead of uh, endocrine type of regulation. Now, why that's relevant? Because we know these innate lymphocytes, innate like T cells, express high level CD122, uh, which is a receptor, the beta chain receptor for interleukin 50 and, and the interleukin 2. What's important was that. If you cross the polyamino tumor to interleukin-15 deficient background, that completely wiped out this grind on uh, um, expressing lymphocytes. Um, that also associated with the enhanced tumor growth. Um, which we also did a, a general function experiment, essentially cross this mite to R15 transgenic background to make this, uh, the tumor or, or broadly uh, the mice express more uh, interleukin-15. That in fact can expand that population that is associated with reduced tumor growth. That su suggests that interleukin-15 could be put a limiting factor to control the magnitude of this innate lymphocyte response. But another question is how is indeed interleukin-15 involved in controlling re this response? You could imagine that can uh, regulate the differentiation of these cells, right? Therefore, it has nothing to do with tumor sensing, or maybe in fact could be more intriguingly involved with some kind of sensing in the tumor microenvironment. Now, we, we looked into this second possibility uh, for various reasons, for instance, interleukin 15 is known to be widely expressed, uh, not only in the hematopoietic uh, lineage of cells, but also broadly in other uh, tissue types. Uh, so therefore, in this context, we first looked into where R15 can be expressed in the tumor microenvironment. And we focused initially on the potential APC population, because there's uh, previous studies from Avery Ma uh, and the colleagues to show that both dendritic cell and macrophage express interleukin 15 receptor in alpha in that case is critical to control the uh, homeostasis and response to infection for, uh, in terms of uh, NK cell response or, or conventional CD8 T cell response. So therefore in this context, we ask the question, could these APC sources of I15 potentially involved in control these tissue resident uh, lymphocytes? Now with this I15 reported mouse strain, we could show to various degrees I15 could be expressed in this two DC population and also the two macrophage population we identified uh, in this particular model. Um, to really understand whether they are functionally important, we crossed a flux strain of interleukin-15 to a Cree line that would delete in this APC compartment, CD11 and CQ. Surprisingly, we 
could not find a defect for this grand uh, response. And also, we did not see uh, a significant tumor phenotype, uh, suggesting that this APC source of interleukin 15 appears to be dispensable for uh, this uh, uh, grand arm. Uh, uh, producing lymphocyte, uh, expansion of this gland uh, 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 producing lymphocyte in the tumor. We also uh, did a sort of immunologist to the trick, which is called bomaro, mixed bomaro chimera, which in which case we could not only look into this APC compartment targeted by CD11C, but also more, look more broadly this radio sensitive hematopolyneage of cells by reconstituting, for instance, uh, R15 deficient uh, mice with uh, Y type R15 sufficient bone marrow, which will you soon have R15 to be expressed in the all hematopoietic lineage of cells, or vice versa. We can have the, uh, the white type cell reconstituted with R15 deficient in bone marrow, so, so, so we have R15 to be defined more broadly in the hematopoietic lineage. Uh, with these type of experiments, really uh, revealed that it's, it's uh, in 15 comes from radio resistant compartment, not the radio sensitive hematopoietic compartment. So that really prompted us to really uh, ask the question, could in fact interleukin-15 uh, it can be pr uh, produced uh, uh, by, in fact, uh, tumor cells, in fact, directly regulating this response? So indeed, uh, the, with the report, we could show interleukin-15 is expressed in the epithelial cell lineage in both the non-transformed epithelial and in the transformed mammary uh, tumor cells. What's important though is that now if you cross these mice to a CRE line that specifically delete I15 in the epithelial lineage, now we have a profound depletion of this grand B producing lymphocytes. And uh, these, the depletion takes place in all lineages, innate lymphocytes, alpha, beta, gamma, data, uh, uh, T cells, uh, and also whatever the remaining, for instance, the 49 high uh, um, NK1.1 positive, this, this IRC or ITC lineage of cell, they also express low levels of grand arm B. So essentially, this tumor sources of interleukin-15 appears to be critical to promote not only the expansion of these cells, but also promote the effective function of these cells. This is a, a control for this experiment. The conventional NK cells in the tumor, uh, we find no uh, difference, essentially, implying they are residing in a distinct niche in terms of R15 dependent regulation. What's important was in this case, now we have accelerated tumor phenotype, strongly su suggests that it's tissue resident uh, in a lymphocyte instead of circulating natural killer cells likely to be involved for cancer immune surveillance. Now, I want to switch gear a bit uh, to tell you, update some of our ongoing work, try to further understand the distinct nature of this response in terms of uh, uh, first of all, the identity of these cells, and also in terms of how exactly these cells are involved in tumor cell sensing. Um, so Gonez has introduced a technique, attack sequencing, uh, which is very uh, uh, efficient uh, and uh, uh, a way to, in fact, look into the chromatin status of various, sometimes rare populations, in the, which is, in fact, is the case for, for these cells. What we essentially did was that we, we sorted these cells and looked for, uh, performed the attack sequencing experiment looking for uh, the, the chromatin openness uh, of the region. Now, in part because we want to understand this lineage question, uh, also we want to also identify uh, more specific markers for these cells, therefore we can make better tools for the, to study these cells. It's, it's just like the transcriptome data, the attack sequencing experiment revealed that this IC, RTC type of cells really look more like each other and quite distinct from the conventional NK cells, or in this case, these more conventional types of uh, alpha beta lineage of CD8 exhausted PD1 positive T cells. Now, as I said, we want to develop better tools to study these cells. And, and in this case, we focused on more the transcript that can be specifically induced, which can also be associated with specific openness of chromatin for this transcript. Remember, we, we introduced this uh, project by looking for the grand B producing lymphocytes. Indeed, if we look into the RNA sequencing experiment, these are the cells that specifically express the grand B. But uh, surprisingly, that if you look into the ATAC sequencing experiment, the locus appears to be equally open in all lymphocyte population, which means that this probably regulated by more acute uh, signals instead of more epigenetically controlled. But, but what's interesting was that for the grand C locus, uh, just like grand B, it's very much specific to these cells to various degrees in terms of transcript level, 
and uh, also what's striking was that the chromatin status of the grand MC locus appears really specific with this innate lymphocyte or innate like T cell, but not for the convention NK or the exhausted uh, 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 CDA positive T cells. And, and because of this observation, we generate a genetic tool in which we, had, we knocked in a report of which TD tomato and the CRE recombinates to the grand MC locus. And in a, the very first experiment, what we did was essentially look for the specificity of this CRE line by crossing to a flux uh, YAP reporter. So indeed, we could mark very much specifically these tissue resident innate lymphocytes, about 60% uh, of them, not, does not label uh, much of this NK, commission NK cell compartment. And we could also label uh, uh, from like uh, 25 to, to 60 something percent of the IOTC uh, population. Therefore, we can be confident that this is somewhat a selective CRE target this uh, group uh, of cells. Um, with this line, the first question we asked is that where these cells are localized. Uh, as I showed you, you, you can find a few of these cells in a non-transformed epithelium. So that's the initial we, we looked for. This is just a general um, a diagram to show the epithelial structure. We know, for instance, most of these uh, luminal epithelia, in this case, uh, in the mammary tissue, they reside in a distinct uh, tissue context in which that this luminal epithelium is, uh, uh, interacts with more basal epithelium, which is further uh, enshared by um, uh, base membrane, membrane and extracellular matrix. Uh, what appears to be clear that these TD tomato positive uh, lymphocytes, which will be grand MC expressing lymphocytes, they reside within the uh, basement membrane and extracellular matrix, appears to be in direct contact with the luminal epithelium. So they appear to be intraepithelial lymphocytes, but explains the tissue resident uh, phenotype. What's also intriguing was that uh, in the transformed mammary gland, in this case, we're marked by polymer middle T oncogene expression. We see really expansion of the TD tomato positive uh, lymphocytes, uh, this innate lymphocytes. Uh, which is quanti quantified here. So essentially, this local transformation would result in expansion of the genetic lymphocytes, which provide a mechanism of uh, uh, some kind of tumor uh, 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 cell specificity or a transformation associated uh, response. And with this, too, we're also interested in understanding the dynamics of this cellular behavior. And also, in particular, what can be uh, distinct sensing mechanism takes place in this context. So to this end, we cross this report on CRE line to two additional transgenic mice. One has this CFP fused for cadherin 1, which we're going to use that to mark the tumor cells. It's a fusion protein. Therefore, we can use that to really mark the tumor cells. We also cross this mice to a stop flux GCAMP5 reporter. So GCAMP5 is a fusion protein of GFP to a CAD module, and with this M13 peptide. What, what that enables is essentially it's a calcium report. So only in the presence of calcium, the binding to calcium module, which would uh, uh, dissociate this M13 peptide from GLP, make it essentially a fluorescent. And in the absence of calcium, essentially GLP will be silenced. So with, with that as a tool, we did a real-time imaging type experiments looking for the distinct behavior of these cells. The first thing we've observed is that we see some kind of swarming behavior, this grand uh, expressing cells in the tumor. And uh, um, now I'll play you a short video to uh, see, to review that indeed, in fact, we could observe a casting response in the context of interaction of, between these cells and the tumor. Just focus on this, this cell and another cell, and the essential GFP signal, the flash of GFP signal will review the casting response. It will be uh, essentially, yeah, it will be played a second time. Um, so it appears to be the tissue rather than lymphocytes. Not only they reside in the tissue, they can also respond to cues associated with uh, this uh, tumor uh, cell transformation and give you a robust calcium response. And what's also intriguing was that the calcium response appears uh, to be polarized to the site of tumor contact because you see more of an e-cadherin co-localization uh, of the calcium response. Um, so I, I think with that, we, we we, we, uh, we propose that uh, in this oncogene induced tumor model, uh, uh, it not only looks like just in the mouse model, but also appears to be in, in cancer patients, there are these distinct lineages of 
uh, innate lymphocytes and innate like T cells, they can that have the tissue resonance property. They can also involved in uh, cancer immunosurveillance in part through a satellitic response. And, in, uh, and I think, was, uh, at least in the mouse model, that response appears to be involved, uh, controlled by direct sensing of tumor expressed in interleukin 15. And that would be somewhat distinct from uh, this other more conventional type of T cell response. And uh, 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 to a good extent, much of that response is about immune tolerance. Um, so hopefully, uh, 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 further study uh, of uh, this response could lead to uh, potentially uh, new uh, avenues of translational opportunities for uh, engaging uh, uh, this tissue resident uh, response for cancer therapy. So, so with that, uh, we acknowledge um, uh, people in the lab who contribute to this project. Uh, bulk of the work uh, was, uh, uh, the published work was uh, performed by a former postdoctoral fellow in the lab, Saida Daddy. He has now moved on to be a sci uh, principal scientist at uh, Regeneron, and uh, there's, there's a, a few other folks in the lab uh, more focused on some of this type of question. Uh, the collaborators, um, uh, in particular, uh, Koichi uh, Ituka, uh, Ikuta for pro providing, uh, providing us the I-15 report and flux mouse strains, and uh, um, uh, Ari uh, from our kidney program for providing us the human patient samples and the funding agencies. Thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take questions. Very exciting. Uh, you mentioned the L15 is expressed in both the normal epithelial and the tumor cells. Do you know the function um, in the normal epithelial when L15 is expressed, how on the uh, the innate uh, resident function of those um, cells? And also, does L15 downregulate when the tumor progress? Yeah, it's, it's a very good question. So um, there are a few, there are low numbers of these cells already in, in the apparent healthy tissues. And we have evidence to suggest interleukin-15 coming from this healthy epithelium also required for maintenance of these, uh, of the generation, maintenance of these cells. Um, now, as for how this potentially, uh, this response may be, uh, you know, tumors may evade this response for, for 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 for, uh, for doing its progression, I think there was a study published in 2014. So in some of the uh, colon cancer patients, so interleukin 15 mutation appears to be a quite resistance mechanism, <coughs> therefore uh, supporting some kind of interleukin 15 dependent local regulation through tumor uh, can be a, a immune evasion mechanism. Uh, although the exact identity of lymphocyte popular in that context is still remain to be determined. Very interesting, yeah. Ming. Um, your imaging approach shows that you have uh, 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 an expansion, uh, a local expansion of this uh, tissue resident in uh, innate lymph lymph itself. Do you know if it's a clonal expansion that they a like, proliferating cell, or it's like a recruitment mm -hmm. of neighboring cell which are sensing the L15? Yeah, it's a very, very excellent question. I think it's kind of both. For instance, we, we could look into the clonality question by looking at this T cell compartment. Indeed, we did a single cell TCR sequencing experiments. We could see essentially uh, some of these cells have the exact, exact same TCR. So that's again a sign of clonal expansion. Uh, but we also have evidence in the lab to show, in fact, with, with time, with tumor progression, also recruitment of progenitor cells to further differentiate these cells in uh, uh, the tumor. So I think it will be a both mechanisms contribute to the expansion of these cells. That's right. It's, it's, oh, again, it's a very good question. So the expansion, the magnitude, extent of expansion is not the same level of conventional T cells. For instance, they have much bigger clone if you sequence a TCR from the PD-1 uh, subset. Um, so I think there are, are probably wiring mechanisms into, now we have evidence again, such as there are distinct lineage of lymphocytes uh, that uh, is coupling this type of recognition mechanism with the potential of colonial expansion. Great talk. Um, my question is kind of in line with the first question regarding um, epithelial tumor cell derived IL-15. So um, uh, you have talked about some uh, possible uh, mechanism that tumor cells might uh, bypass this pathway. So I'm wondering, is there any mutation of these genes in tumor cells or mutation of genes upstream of IL-15 
to disrupt this signaling so they can um, bypass uh, immune surveillance. And also, is uh, do, do you think the effect of IL-15 is locally, or you can actually detect an increase of this um, th this protein in, in, for example, in circulation? And when in perspective of the human patients, is there any heterogeneity of uh, IL-15? Yeah, yeah. So, so I think uh, I. I address partly the first question. Indeed, uh, this somatic mutation I15, I think in some colon cancer patient, implying that there can be immune evasion mechanism. Uh, I don't think systemically, uh, systemic I15 level will be at the detectable differences in many patients. And I believe uh, this, this study we perform in animals will really suggest that much of regulation has to be in the tissue in in fact, probably in the, cellular, in the contact cellular cellular interaction. So this is not a systemic response. Again, I think that has significant implication about how we should target I-15 for therapy, right? I know there's a lot of interest in industry about targeting I-15, uh, but probably we need to really target in the, in the specific and distinct manner to make it effective. Oh. <laughs> uh, so the MMTV polyoma middle T antigen is a little bit on, of an unusual model of cancer in that the antigen and the oncogene is expressed from embryonic day 11 onwards and would expect to be therefore tolerized perhaps or it should be recognized as a self antigen. Do you, have you, so a couple of questions. Do you think that the spectrum of lymphocytes that you are seeing as a major player is affected by that, and have you tried to induce it um, later uh, under a conditional mutation to see whether the response changes? Yes, yeah, excellent question. Yeah, first of all, to your point, yes, polyamino T will be tolerized because it essentially becomes a self antigen, right? So, whatever these other responses we see, whatever other, which very much like the new antigens, particularly for these PD1 positive cells, so therefore will be. Uh, sporad sporadic mutations cause that response. So polyimmunity will not be antigen in this context. Now we, back to the second question is more about uh, how is this response regulated, right? The timing issue and everything. We're making animal models so that we can inducibly induce the, the oncogen. Uh, in that context, that by itself will also be a antigen, not only just the oncogen. We don't have that model yet. Uh, uh, but again, that's an interesting question. Right? That age dependent phenomena, and we could not address in, uh, with this transgenic model we have. But it's a good question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, coming back to Ira's introduction. Um, so uh, we saw that immunotherapy targeting CDLA4, PD1, PDL1 axis uh, is successful in around about 10 to 30 percent of patient populations sometimes more. Uh, so what's your prediction if you now target the innate lymphocytes? Do we target the remaining 70% or is it a sliver of 5%? Well, wait, that's probably too big a question for me to address. Uh, but I, I think uh, the tumor immunology is still at its infancy, in my opinion, which means that there's a lot of fundamental questions still have not yet addressed, although Nobel already given. <laughs> uh, so. Um, uh, you know, back to your question, right? How much targeting this mechanism for the enhanced PD-1 or CTL4 dependent therapy? Uh, I think certainly will be complementary to what has been targeted. Uh, and again, cancer is an extremely complex disease. Uh, and it's, it's really still, I think, it needs a lot more work to be done. Now, to what extent we can use cancer, tar use cancer therapy to to treat as many as possible uh, cancer patients. And, and again, I think this really will depend on more fundamental understanding. Uh, this different as various aspects of tumor-induced immune response and, and even beyond, even for that conventional lymphocyte response, beyond the current thinking about satellitic lymphocyte response controlled by PD-1 or CTL4. Uh, I think it's a lot more work to be done to really maximize the power of the immune system for cancer therapy. Have you seen any uh, uh, exhaustive phenotype in this cell compared to uh, conventional? And then uh, the follow-up question is: When you treat like a nebo and other uh, immunotherapy, are they uh, can be you know less curable? Yeah, that's a good question. So it's published. So so these are different from the conventional uh, T cells. They do not express uh, exhaustion markers. So in some of them, they would be PD-1 negative. 
CTL4 negative. Uh, that's why they are really unique, distinct from the conventional T cells. Um, so uh, we are exploring uh, various ways to target genetically at this point mostly, uh, but I also try to evaluate some of that in the context of anti-PD1 TCTL4 therapy and see how much synergy we could achieve uh, in terms of uh, tumor inhibition. In your movies that you were playing, you had the calcium flux in your um, ILC cells. Were you getting engagement and killing of the epithelial cells in it, or was it actually flashing a signal followed by ignoring the stimulus? Yeah, it's, they, it's, they, they seem to be intact. That's right. It's, it's, a, it's a good question. And, and we, we are trying to build <coughs> reporters of cell apoptosis uh, uh, to really Im uh, image killing uh, uh, in the lab. And uh, at this point, we don't know. But although it has been established, the calcium response is a prerequisite for cytolytic uh, T cell a cytolytic uh, killing, a, a, a cytolytic response to take place. So at least that's in the right direction in, in terms of uh, supporting this uh, killing activity in vivo, but we don't have direct evidence for that. I want to thank uh, Ming again and for both of our speakers.